Hi, Matt of LFD Research. I need to give you guys a bit of an explanation for this video because last time we did one of these, people seemed a little confused. So first off, right now I'm recording with one of our basic cameras. For most of this video, we are using a high-speed camera. We use a Kronos 1.4 to film most of this video. The resolution is obviously lowered, but we did the lowering resolution to get higher frame rates, which gave us an effective frame rate. Now, this is actual frame rate that was recorded of 5,899 frames per second. That means that's how many pictures were taken per second. The way this camera works is you have a four second buffer on the version we have. That means this video clip, the longest it can be is four seconds. So when you are seeing this, I'm not going to cut it so you can't just actually see where it transitions from one shot to the next, to the next, to the next. You will actually see the entire time frame from shot to shot. What you will find is there is little to no movement of the barrel at all until the projectile has left the barrel. Then you will see lots of movement as the gun cycles. The rifle used in this testing is right here. We have a free floated handguard. So the only attachment point is all the way back here. This is the Manticore Arms Transformer Rail. We have a fax and pencil barrel here. The Dead Air Chemo Break. Now this is obviously the longer version of it because you know, this is before the Key Micro came out. Standard weight bolt carrier group, H1 buffer, and then I have the Geisley Super 43 spring in here. So fairly basic system, direct impingement. We have two different suppressors. First, we have a Dead Air Sandman K here, this little tiny thing. Then for the heavier one, we have a Dead Air Sandman L. You will notice there's actually a first round pop on both of these, so the first shot actually has more stuff than the second shot. But again, we have two different suppressors, massively different lengths and different weights. So that is actually quite important and you will notice it as what it does to the barrel whip. But again, Pay attention before the bullet clears. Let's take a look at first round pop here. Now, if you watch the back of the can, you will see gas escaping. You will always see gas escaping from the front of the can, but there is much more escaping from the rear than the front on this first round, and you will see a flash. This one has an added flash hider on it. Now we will change off to the second shot here. You'll see there's much less gas escaping at the rear. You still have a flash. Now this is slower playback of the same first shot. So you can kind of see the gas difference. Now I'll do the second shot slower again. Notice how it's a very tiny puff of gas. The further you go through it, the less that goes. Here's the Sam NL, same thing. You'll notice a puff of gas at the rear and a flash at the front. Let's go with the second shot and there's almost no flash at the front and very little gas to skew at the rear. Let's slow that down again. First round. And second round. And you'll notice how there's almost no movement of the can before or after it fires. Now let's compare the first shot with all that gas versus the last shot of the string. Now this is the Sandman K here again. And now look at the end. You'll notice there was very little gas out of the last round. That first round, clearing out the oxygen in the can really does make it more. Here's the San Manel. You'll see a lot more at the front and more at the rear again. Now let's look at the last shot. You can actually catch the bullet leaving here. So much extra suppressor volume gives you so much better gas control, as you can see. All right, next up, we are going to overlay multiple clips here. We have the Sandman K over just the bare break. This is the first shot of each. At the start of the clip, we have the rails perfectly aligned, and then you can see how it changes throughout the recoil cycle. It gets all blurry when you have slightly different recoil, and you can see the barrel and the suppressor, how the same barrel changes slightly between the two. This is the same playback clip, second time around. And again, this is first shot through each. So we have the most comparable results possible. You'll notice that yes, there is a slight difference in recoil on both. And that's where it gets slightly burly and out of effect. But again, you can also see how you have a slight bit more barrel whip continuing longer 
with the suppressor on versus just the bare muzzle device. Again, this is slowed playback speed from the first time you sawed it. Next up, we are going to do the Sandman L and just the brake. So you can take a look at that as well. Again, this is first round shot. You notice how with the recoil there is very similar, but is also slightly different. The mass does change it, but you can see when it comes back into sync a little bit. And you'll notice that, again, the more mass you hang on the end of the barrel, the longer the whip continues, but it still does not continue to the next shot. Here we go again. This is slowed back, 50% playback speed of what it previously was. And again, you can see when the recoil happens, it's fairly similar, and then it desyncs. And then it will eventually sync back up. So we do have a difference, and you will notice that the harmonics of the barrel is greatly different, and that is because of the added mass changes it. Next up, we are going to do the Sandman L and the Sandman K at the same time, and you will be able to get a good glimpse at what the difference is between the two different weights of suppressors. Because again, we are looking at mass on the end of the barrel tuning the harmonics. It is remarkable how similar they are and then how quickly they get out of sync. You'll notice how the barrel whip happens with much more speed on the shorter can than the longer can, but the weight difference is also much greater. Now you can see here we are at 50% playback speed. If you watch that casing go through, you can get a rough idea of how fast things are actually occurring. And truth is, that might even be two shots ago. We are firing so fast to try and get multiple shots in here for this. But again, you're noticing that any and all movement is definitely slowed. The iron mass does seem to make it so you get less movement or absolutely no movement, depending on how you want to look at it and how close you want to look before the projectile leaves the barrel. It's when the bolt carrier bottoms out, you seem to get the largest amount of movement of the barrel. All right, now we are going to move on to the entire recorded strings of fire, starting obviously first with just the muzzle brake. And you can see where the movement is. And right here you can see when the bolt has gone forward again and closed. And you notice the movement is still working on damping out. Not 100% damped out yet, but it's still damping out. And then it's pretty much stopped by this point and here comes the next shot any moment now. You don't have barrel movement. And now, next shot, there's barrel movement. Now remember, on the top of this muzzle device, there is three holes that match up with each one of those chambers on the brake. That is going to cause movement up and down on the barrel in addition to what is caused by the bolt carrier bottoming out in the end of the buffer tube and then movement again when it comes back forward and stops.
All right, and here we have the Sandman K. Again, this is the exact order it was shot in. We are not skipping anything. We are not cutting out time. This is going shot to shot to shot to shot so you can see exactly what happens and how soon any and all barrel whip is tamped out before the next shot is fired. And there you can see the brass is flying forward. Now, I want you to keep in mind on this, we were just using a mag of ammo and just doing dumps. So we don't have the same amount of shots on every single gun because it's try and get as much in to try and go as rapidly as possible because unfortunately we don't have access to a machine gun where we can just have a rapidity where you can see if on a machine gun it's going to fire as quickly it's going to fire as soon as it's back in battery current laws in the US prevent that so we work with what we have so when you are in semi auto you can pretty much see here that any and all barrel movement is tamped out before your next shot takes place. Which not everyone seems to believe, but the footage here is showing that pretty well. Again, we are running at almost 5,900 frames per second to get that. And here we are with the Sandman L. This is a lot more mass, and you can see movement is definitely massively enhanced when it seems to end, and it does stay moving longer. But again, the movement seems to be completely tamped out before the next shot happens. What's interesting on this one is there's so much volume here, you barely see the gas, and you can actually pick up the bullet before it leaves the screen. So you can get a flash between when it fires and when it leaves. Not on every single one of these shots, but on most of them, you can actually capture a glimpse of the projectile as it's leaving the barrel. I think that's really neat. And honestly, I wish we could catch it more often. Just there's too much gas for the camera to actually see the projectile leaving most often. But right there, you saw it really nicely. And again, we are trying to go and capture what it looks like when you're doing a rapid string, whether or not the motion of the barrel has tamped out before you launch the next round. And honestly, my take on seeing this footage is, yeah, it has stopped before you fire the next round. But you are more than welcome to tear apart this footage and see if you can find more movement that I seem to be missing when looking at this.